Hello everyone, I'm back. It's been a little over two months since my last video. Uh, I took a little break and time went very quickly, but here we are again with a new What Makes This Track Tick video. Um, and today, none other than Slam, their track Echo Enclosure. Before we get started though, let me remind you, I am still giving away my free sample pack, Too Many DFAM Kicks. Um, you can get that in the link, uh, link in the video description. So, slam, I mean, if you're into techno, into serious techno, there's uh, no ignoring slam. Of course, they've been going for a very long time, more than 20 years releasing a lot of quality music and of course with their legendary label Soma Records and all the other artists, the great artists they have on there. So um, I've been wanting to do a video on them for a long time, have been looking for the right track to do this and I chose this one Echo Enclosure which is a fairly recent one, um, two years old or something, um, one or two years which is recent um, given how long they've been at it but um, I chose this one because the overall sound is sort of very typical for Slam. They have some variation of course in the types of tracks they release, they're not all um, exactly the same uh, type of, of uh, techno, some of them are more sort of old school sounding, this is more their, their yeah I think modern sound uh, which they've had for uh, some time and very heavily focused around uh, a square wave main synth and acid synth. And especially this track I think is a very good example of that and how they do a lot with very little ingredients. So let's get into it. Uh, I'll just start by playing um, a few sections here so you get a, a general idea of what this is about. So. Let's start with the basics here, the kick and the sub bass, the low end. Um, I try to recreate these, they definitely don't sound the same, the original sounds a lot bigger, but just to give you an idea what types of sounds and parts are going on here. Um, this is a um, 135 BPM, 4 to the floor rhythm, so we get a kick. Quite a distorted sound, um, mid-rangey, it also has uh, plenty of sub presence in it. If you look at the spectrum here on the FAP filter. Similar sound. This one I got from a very good sample pack called 100 Techno Kicks, 101 Techno Kicks. I don't remember where I got it, um, but this is the uh, WT kick noise sample. I use these a lot in my productions. Um, very handy rap, you can pitch it, you can have filters and stuff. Um, some really great sounds in there. Okay, then the bass. I use the sample here with a pitch bend. It sounds like eight notes going up and down. Um, here I did quarter notes with a with a pitch bend rather than seven notes. You could also have done separate notes with a glide, like most synths have, like this glide parameter where you can set the speed at which the pitch changes. I couldn't find that setting on simpler or sampler. Um, I don't really have another sampler um, plugin. I think I only uh, I really only use simpler and sampler. I'm not really into contact and stuff like that. So I did it this way, I just made this, uh, I drew this, drew this pitch envelope, it's sort of eight semitones, 
eight or nine semitones up and this sort of gives these quarter notes this sort of eighth note pulsating feel um, not so easy to hear in original um, but easier once you put a low pass filter on it you can hear this too and this really has this driving sort of rumbling um, sound that a lot of slam tracks have this really nice full low end just pulsating kicking um, at this sort of one eighth pulse and uh, yeah that's what I try to recreate here to give you an idea okay now onto the main part here the, um, the sort of the, the thing of the track this acid synth I used a 303 emulation um, I'm not sure whether they actually used a 303. It's very stereo sounding, this track, uh, this uh, part. Maybe they used several synth tracks panned in different directions. I simulated this a little bit with an uh, auto pan. It's a, it's a 16 note pattern. Um, let me play the original again so you can hear what's going on. Take off the uh, low pass filter here. What you hear is these notes where some of them there is this square wave ringing and other there's this shorter choppier noisy part and I've tried to emulate this with um, using different velocity um, with these darker grayish notes uh, with a lower velocity and that gives it a little bit more of a shorter snappier choppier sound although it doesn't sound the same as the original but this is what I came up with. And as you can see, this is a very elaborate five bar pattern. I, I slowed the track down when I was analyzing this to say, make sure that I got the same, I think it's more or less the same. Uh, so it's it's basically a polymeter. First I thought this is like a, a short, you know, maybe it's like 15 steps, 15 over 16, uh, where you know it repeats, but it looks like it's a longer pattern. Um, almost looks like it's random, but I don't think it is. I think uh, I spent quite a lot of time trying to analyze this. I think it is actually a five bar pattern that loops. Um, and within that, there doesn't seem to be a shorter uh, uh, division. Uh, so very elaborate uh, thing. Um, I used a MIDI clip, as you can see, and not uh, ABL's built-in sequencer, which does go to 64 steps. Um, I don't think a 303 does that. Uh, maybe they didn't use a 303 something else, or maybe they did a modded one which uh, can accept MIDI notes, or maybe they used a virtual one like I did. But there's, yeah, this sort of choppiness, this snappy sound of those notes in between. I didn't know how to emulate that, to be honest. It could be something layered on top. Um, and then there's also this droning sound going on. Um, which may be reverb um, on the synth or it may be a separate sound. I think it's both. Um, again, let's listen to, to the original. For instance, you can hear it here quite well. This noisy drone on top. So what I did is I took a um, serum which has several noise samples in them um, not a noise oscillator but samples for noise and doesn't sound the same but it has this sort of noisy but also a little bit voice like quality um, and I think it's more than just a reverb on the main synth with some sort of overtones although it could be that too um, hard to know how they did this it sounds layered it sounds like there's more going on uh, as in with other tracks like the one by Louis Fauci uh, I did some time ago, it's difficult to find out what is exactly uh, happening with all these different parts, especially when people start layering samples, because yeah, sample can be anything and um, not just recognizable synth parts. So a lot of this is about the sound design or the sound selection, uh, because the, the song, the track itself is, is very simple, very few ingredients, because other than this main synth, 
this with reverb and maybe delay and this drone there's only three hi-hat parts um, in addition to that so um, what is really carrying this this tune that's the automation in uh, mostly in the in the asset synth um, which is sort of providing variation and I drew some automation here um, go sort of up and down this is not very precise um, second half of the track I didn't do this um, and then when you get to the break uh, the sound gets sort of drowned out by reverb before we get there let's just touch on the uh, the hi-hats here very basic of 32 bars there's this one starting I'll just play the part running up to that very short clicky hat on every second eighth note and then at sort of a weird time interval after uh, 54 bars a little bit strange this one is added it's more like a shaker on, on every eighth note okay and then the break which starts as a weird moment here at a weird time um, two bars before 80 and 80 will be 5 times 16 or 10 times uh, 8 bars. Uh, there's a high pass on the kick. And it sort of fades out a little bit. Um, the first high it continues, the second stops. Also at a very strange time, 3 bars after the start of the break. Um, these little variations uh, on what you would expect, like you would expect it stops at the start of the break or maybe after four or eight bars. This one three, just a little bit of variation there. The other one fades out and then the break is sort of carried by the variation happening in the main synth. And this droney noise in the background, which becomes more obvious here. Comes louder as well. But you can also hear that the main synth is being drowned out in the reverb. I tried to emulate that here, failed, but <laughs> it's just becoming all reverb here. I did that by putting the reverb on the track itself, it's not a send, and just moving the slider, the mix here towards 100%, basically drowning out the dry signal and replacing it completely with the wet signal. Uh, and after that, we go into a big fat drop. Kick stops for one bar before this happens. Sorry, I played original. And there's this new hi hat, more like an open hat. Like I said, I didn't bother to draw more automation, but that's what's happening throughout the, the second half here. It's more variation in the in the synth parameters. Uh, interestingly, this hi-hat changes. Decay increases, gives it a little bit more high energy. It's a nice variation. Again, this is happening after a strange number of bars here. Um, 17 bars counting from the drop and then four seven bars then it goes back to this one and then three bars six bars later or 12 how much is it 12 one two three i don't know <laughs> six bars later you get this shaker like sound again more automation more variation we get to a second break the high pass on the kick. Again, the automation on the main synth here. And now the, um, the hi hat here changes actually, the uh, decay becomes shorter. That's why I gave this yet a different color. It's definitely stereo sound in the main synth, isn't there?
then we get the first very short clicky hi-hat again. Although that sort of quickly starts fading out and we're in the outro. And I'll jump a little bit to the end. Again, you can hear the synth is drowning out again. Actually, it sounds like a, there's also this sort of 16th note shaker thing going on here. I may have missed that. But yeah, it's all becoming a big wash. And then the end. So, what we, did we learn here, Klaus? Well, <laughs> it's a little bit like Italian cooking, this. Uh, weird reference maybe, but Italian cooking is characterized by generally not the most complicated recipes, but a focus on very good ingredients and a very good combination of ingredients. So doing a lot with a little, and this is definitely an example of that too. Um, this track where, as you can hear, there's layering going on. There's definitely sort of a complexity to the synth parts, um, but they do sound like one coherent thing and it's definitely not a million things going on. Um, they're playing throughout these, this synth and this, this drone, whether that's all reverb or some sort of send effect or a separate sample of, uh, in, in addition to this, difficult to know. Um, the, it doesn't really matter because this is the stuff you have to come up with yourself, right? And this is a lot, um, what good techno is about is just finding the stuff that fits together really well that becomes this sort of glues together to one sort of coherent um, sound and can be very difficult um, for a listener even if uh, and if he's an experienced he or she an um, experienced producer to figure out what is exactly going on especially when when there's a lot of samples being used because of course a sample can be any sound and we saw this in a few earlier videos as well, especially the one um, I did on uh, the track by Louis Fauci comes to mind. Also, very difficult to pick apart what is exactly going on, but you sort of get the idea, um, a sort of rich, complex sound that, that sounds actually more simple than it is um, with variation throughout the track. And that's really what gives it this, uh, this uh, great vibe and then for some more interest and variation. Uh, there's a little bit of timing weirdness going on, things starting and stopping at sort of unusual moments without it sounding disjointed. That to me suggests that they played it by hand, that they just recorded a bunch of synths and drum machine. Um, and uh, when you do that, you, heard, you hear this in DJ sets as well. If you were to count along, sometimes they don't count to eight or 16, but it's 14 or 17. Um, Without it sounding completely wrong, it does make things a little bit more interesting and organic, I guess, I guess the word I was uh, looking for there. So yeah, that's my analysis of this awesome track by Slam. I hope it was useful or at least somewhat amusing. Uh, in any case, for me, it feels great to be back, to be making videos again. I'll be uh, releasing more music again uh, as well because I've been on a little bit of a hiatus uh, on that regard too, but I have something coming up by the end of March on my own label and also something coming up on a different label, which I'll talk about some more. Um, again, um, get the free samples, uh, the DFAM kick samples in the video description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.